Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Cult of Paint. Today I'm going to be painting a power sword but really this video is actually about layering and glazing. One of the most common questions asked is how do I paint smoother and I'm hoping that this video can help contribute towards you getting a smoother result. So I think that practicing these techniques on a sword is fantastic and that's because they have simple straight lines that aren't too big and it's a really great way to practice blending. I'm using a grey primer but it really doesn't matter it's just what I had and the sword is actually from Conversion World and I really like these because they're super crisp and have nice sharp edges. The paints I'm going to use today are all from the Vallejo model colour line and I tend to like these paints the most just because they're really opaque and they have a smooth finish. I'm going to write in the description some Citadel equivalents, so if you only have Citadel paints, you can use those as well. It's more about practicing the technique rather than the colours. So I start by adding the dark sea blue to the palette, and I'm going to add a couple brushfuls of water. Just make sure when you apply the paint that you check on the first brush stroke it's not too thick. The base coat needs to be really smooth so we have a nice foundation for everything we do after. Notice how even with the base coat, I'm trying to move my brush in a smooth manner and just get really nice even coverage. I'm not going to get it done on the first coat and you'll see that there's parts that are translucent and mottled. You just need to let these dry. Try and do as few brush strokes as possible and then just return to it for a second layer to build it up. So I managed to get an opaque finish after two coats, but it isn't always two, sometimes it might be three or more. Just remember that the foundation must be smooth in order to get the end result smooth as well. Now I'm going to apply my mid-tone, which is going to be turquoise. So you can see me diluting this here. And the first thing we got to do is actually deal with the different angles of the sword. So you can see in this part in the centre, I'm just painting the lower part and leaving a shadow at the top. Then I paint the top of the sword, but I'm going to leave the part facing down all dark. Now before we add highlights, I must show you this really important lesson. As we move the brush across, the point in which we lift the brush off is where it will deposit the most pigment. And that means we must bear in mind the direction we're moving our brush at any point during the highlighting. So now I'm going to move to using blue-green. Now I could make a mix between the turquoise and the blue-green, but if I use the translucency of the paint and pay attention to the direction of my brush stroke, then I don't actually have to make a mix. This can save some time. So now I'm going to begin the highlighting and I'll start a little further down than where I want the highlight to start and just move the brush in one direction towards the end. This is so I'm putting that powerful pigment at the end where I want the highlight to be the brightest. Now it's dry, I hope you can see that there's an area where it's translucent and this is where we just moved the pigment across and it became stronger. This is going to be the beginnings of our blending. This first part was easy because we had the tip of the sword to push the pigment to. Now I'm going to show you how you can deal with adding a highlight that's in the middle of the area. So I'm going to have a highlight where I'm pointing with the brush here. I'm just going to add a little bit of paint to show you what we're aiming for. So it's this kind of part of the sword. Now I'm going to move my brush stroke towards that place where I want the highlight and I hope you can really clearly see where we're depositing the pigment and that is resulting in a brighter, more opaque colour in the place we want it to be. Especially after it's dry you can see and I'm going to add a second layer and build this up. You can adjust where you start the brush stroke depending on which parts you want to become more opaque so just build it up gradually. By taking advantage of the direction we moved our brush, we have areas that are translucent and it's started to build a transition, but the transition isn't perfect. So what we're going to do is use a glaze in order to fix that transition. So what I'm going to do is take my previous color 
which is the turquoise and I'm going to turn that into a glaze. All it needs to be is a translucent paint. There's not a magic ratio for a glaze. It really depends on how powerful the colour is and how much you need to fix the transition. If you're not sure, start with it too translucent. I'm aiming to fix this part here in the middle and what I'm going to do is show you what happens when you have too much on the brush. So I do take a little bit of the paint off and I check the translucency here. But watch when I put it on, you'll see it creates too much of a puddle. And that means I have too much loaded onto the brush. And this is a really common mistake when starting with glazes. So now I'm going to show you again, but I'm really going to take almost all of the paint off. We're trying to create a very thin film when we do our glaze, so we need very little on the brush. So now this time I have just the right amount and I still get that little dot but it is a film now, it's got more control and you can see I can just gradually alter and blend this transition together. What I need to do now is just keep adding glazes until I'm happy that I fixed the transition and this is really going to depend on how good a job you did in the initial layering. Be prepared to be patient with this step because it will take a long time, but this can result in perfect blending. When you're happy with this transition, it's often a good idea to just do another highlight with the previous colour to finish it off. So here I just do another layer with my blue-green highlight and that will fix the transition here. Now what I suggest you do is become comfortable with blending these two colours together. There's not a massive difference between them in terms of value or brightness, so make sure you can blend these two colours together first. When you're comfortable with that, you can take it to the next level and we're going to start to add some brighter highlights. For this, I'm just going to add a little bit of ivory. I'm not sure how much contrast I want at the moment, so I am going to start doing more incremental steps, just adding a little bit at a time. I'm almost starting the process again, but I only have to work on the brighter area. The transition from the blue-green to the turquoise is finished, so I'm just going to add some highlights where I think will look cool. I'm not going for that kind of classic light-dark, light-dark look, I'm just going to have a little bit of variety. So you can see I'm still paying attention to my push and pull brush strokes. Now I'm going to add some more ivory because I feel like I want to push the contrast up again. And again, I'm paying close to my brush stroke direction and I'm just building up two little highlights now on the end. I keep adding ivory until I'm satisfied with how bright the highlights are. I'm making my brush cover a smaller area each time and this is building up a pretty smooth transition and I haven't even done any glazing yet. Now it's looking pretty cool but again, I'm going to use the glazing to totally fix it. And just this part here I'm talking about. So I'll go back to the previous colour, which was the blue-green. And again, I'm going to turn this into a glaze just by adding a bunch of water. This time I'm starting the brush where I want to fix a transition and just carefully running it only over the areas where I need to fix a transition. Because I took more time to gradually layer these highlights, it only took a few glazes to fix this. Once you're happy with all the transitions, you can do some edge highlights now and this will really frame your transition. Just make sure the edge highlights vary in brightness, just like the transitions across the blade. So here you have my almost finished result. I do still need to add highlights, particularly at this lower end here. And I'll probably just do that with blue-green. I hope you enjoyed this video and now you've got a really cool way to try and do some power swords but I also hope that it's helped understanding layering, glazing and the importance of our brush stroke direction and this really can lead to very smooth results if you practice it. If you do try it please tag us in some results, we'd love to know if this has helped improve your blending or just your highlighting in general. Here I want to show you some examples 
of where I've used this technique of pushing and pulling the pigment to get some nice blending results. All of the guides to these figures can be found on our Patreon and if you use these skills taught in our video in conjunction with these guides, I think you'll start to really enjoy getting some smooth blended results. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and a comment. I'd actually love to know if this is new information for some of you, because that's the whole point of these videos, is we really want to teach you some new skills to help you in your painting. If you want to see our future videos, then please subscribe and check out our Patreon page too, where we have a lot of more really in-depth guides. Thanks for checking it out.